What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of the E36 M3 Drift Car Project, Project Main. This is a big one. So let me just kind of say that what's been going on in my life and with both of these cars is really just parts collection. And I don't want to go too deep into everything I'm collecting because I want the satisfaction for you guys of seeing everything kind of come together at a quick rate but I'm talking wheels, aero, body kit parts, like angle kits, like crazy, crazy stuff that's coming. Um, but this stuff is all very expensive. It takes a lot of time to acquire. There's a lot of details that need to go into it. There's people that need to help me with this process. So that's kind of why the videos have been so sluggish lately, but I promise that it's going to make the videos that are coming much higher quality. So now that that's out of the way, I actually got this car ready for the trip to Helen, Georgia for Alpine Volksfair um, about a couple weeks ago. And to be honest, I kind of burnt myself out. I kind of went way too hard. I was way too stressed out for about six days straight of nonstop, no sleep work on this thing to get it daily drivable. But it drove there, it did fantastic. I had so much fun. I went and drove Tail of the Dragon as well. And there's footage of all of that in this video that I'm about to show you. And the prep work that it took to get there is pretty insane. And I didn't film as much as I probably should have because I was so stressed out, but I did get a lot of clips. So here's that. And I hope you enjoy seeing this thing go from no front end, no suspension to ready to hit the road. So the first order of business on the car was to go ahead and get these nasty brakes rebuilt. Now you'll see here I'm using just a normal wrench to take the front brake lines off which in hindsight is a bit of a mistake, however I got away with it but as I moved on to the back I was soon to discover that a normal wrench for taking these flared fittings off is not exactly ideal. So as I moved on to the back, I got a tip that spraying the rusty fitting with PB Blaster was a really good idea, so I went ahead and did that. But as you can see in this clip, unfortunately, as soon as I put a wrench on it, it rounded right off. So I was in a bit of a pickle. So another thing that proved to be difficult that probably shouldn't have was removing these brake lines. And as you can see here, I tried to get creative with the, the ratchet and a crow's foot wrench. Eventually though, off camera, what I ended up having to do was put that awful contraption onto my impact gun and that was the only way I could end up breaking these brake lines free. It's literally ridiculous, don't know why they were so tight, but that's just kind of the story of this car. This and I didn't mention it, but the way I ended up getting that rounded off fitting in the rear off the car was by actually using vice grips, which I don't recommend. Kind of a one-time thing, I used vice grips and a microfiber, but I ended up getting it off. Anyways, here I am beginning to strip down the calipers for rebuild. And in continuing with the theme of this car and really this braking system, everything was corroded, ridiculously tight, and just, yeah, so fun process. So I can't lie, I'm actually sitting here editing this video live and I'm realizing that from this point on, there's really not that much continuity to all of the footage. Here you're seeing Michael, my boy Real Shine, detailing, getting ready to wet sand and polish these headlights. But after this, things kind of just get random. So what I'm going to do is just kind of lay back, let some music play, and enjoy some shots of no particular order of things getting put on and uh, put together on the car. And I'll check back in when we get ready for our trip to Helen.
I just wanted to interject at this point. One of the other things that I did off camera was replacing these door latch strikers uh, because of the button was worn out so the door was hard to close and it was hard to get the window to actually shut. I learned a lot doing this job. One of the most critical things I learned is never just completely take it out, which I did because the plate that it screws into will just fall down into the quarter panel. It's a nightmare, but if you need to do this job on your E36 and you want more information and some tips that'll make it a breeze, holler at me in the comments and uh, we can talk about it, but moving on. So what you see me doing here is actually something that I did on the convertible. So I'm actually using zip ties to hold the radiator back as opposed to the standard clips. And you can see I'm applying some heat shrink to the zip tie to make it look a little better. Reason why I'm using the zip tie is, like I said in the convertible, simply the fact that the CSF radiator has larger openings for the top brackets to clip onto. And because of that, the radiator can move probably a little bit more than it should and it can cause the shroud to clip the fan and we all know what happens when that happens. So here I am engaging in the absolutely lovely process of turning the control arm nut that goes into the subframe one eighth of a turn at a time. Tightening all the front suspension bolts was literally, it's a big process. There's a lot of stuff, there's a lot of stuff you gotta check, it takes a lot of finagling, but this is among the worst. So here as you can see I'm replacing the old crusty tie rods. First thing you gotta do is snip the end off of the boot or the uh, clamp that holds the boot on for the uh, inner tie rod. Then after that, there's just a big nut. You can use the fan clutch wrench to take this off. I uh, didn't show that part, but anyways. Then you separate the tie rod or take it off as one entire unit. Then I installed a new locking plate since the old ones were completely destroyed. Go ahead and thread on the new entire tie rod assembly. And then after that, you just have to hammer down the locking plate to make sure that the nut doesn't back off that holds on the inner tie rod. And then after that, all that's left is just to torque the outer tie rod nut to the knuckle to spec. So the next few clips are just kind of me finishing up some little small things like you see here, putting on the front bumper, just kind of tidying things up. Um, I didn't record as much as I would have liked to of this whole process going down. I mean, you didn't see me rebuilding the brake calipers or installing every single bolt on the front end, all the new gold zinc hardware and the uh, powder coated skid plate, but I just was so stressed out doing all of this because I was on such a time crunch. I was pulling 14, 15 hour days and it was just, it was a lot. I'm just happy I filmed what I did. I was just happy that I was able to go on the trip at all, to be honest. And one more little story before we get into the driving footage of going to Helen. So, I actually didn't manage to get my calipers ready for powder coat until the night before I was supposed to leave. And not only that, but my mom left at 4 in the morning to get my calipers to the powder coater to where they could do same day turnaround service. Alloy wheel repair specialists of Pelham, Alabama freaking killed it, knocked it out of the park. Not only that, but they powder coated my skid plate as well same day service they weren't necessarily happy to do it but they did it and i'm ever thankful for it and i'm ever thankful for the fact that my mom was willing to do that for me i have the best parents ever so now let's get into it guys
my boy looking out for me. Clint showed up in a stolen car. Bitch, what? So, he did. Bitch, what? Give me on the floor. Now, what? Dude, this thing's fresh. <laughs> Appreciate it, bro. Just simple. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's my daily. My quarter's kind of fucked, but. Oh, that happens. It happens. It's also very dirty. That also happens. Yeah. Very dirty. <laughs> got the tent too. That boy acting up. That boy acting up. Oh. Oh. He got money, money now. AMG. <laughs> hey! Jones, Joan, both. I call them Chin today. Like. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hey, going on guys so we are in Helen Georgia in my M3 I thought it'd be cool to get a bit of a uh, some driving footage so as you saw I had to put in a lot 
I mean a lot of work to get this thing ready. But yeah, we're here. I don't even know what's going on. I don't know what we're doing, but uh, I'm gonna find something to do. Or I might just go drive. I don't know, that's kind of the whole point. So anyways, we are here in Helen, Georgia. I'm freaking stoked to be here. What a fight to get this thing ready, man. tail of the dragon they said it'll only be pouring rain and you'll be stuck behind someone with their camper so much fun <laughs> oh jeez what's going on guys we are on tail of the dragon or at least about to be if I know where I'm going and uh, it just started raining. But I thought some point of view driving would be cool. So we're in the M3. This thing's freaking, I mean, it's not dialed, but it's, it's pretty good. <laughs> so I'm very excited to be here. I've, if you know, I've wanted to come back to Tale of the Dragon with the convertible. And because of circumstances and things and plans that change, that just hasn't been able to happen. But I'm very excited to be here now in the M3. I think this car will do really good out here. I'm not gonna push it by any means. And like I said, it, it is kind of raining on and off. Um, but I do wanna have a little bit of fun and I think this car is gonna be a blast out here. I'm just hoping I don't get anybody too crazy fast behind me because like I said, um, I'm a little skittish. <laughs> so I don't really wanna be pushed, but um, yeah. So it should be up here in a few miles if I'm not mistaken and I'll tune back in then. So this, this is a pretty regular reality of Tale of the Dragon is that you get very average cars slash vehicles with trailers that just find themselves on this road by accident just being stalked by track cars and crazy fast stuff and it's just, it's, it's funny because this is really just a highway that just so happens to have this reputation to it. So, yeah, I don't know, I just think it's funny if you can see this trailer, or this dude in this Explorer, the trailer up ahead of me. <laughs> oh, man. Miata, we're 
racing. I'm not that fast though. He ain't that fast either. <laughs> Alright guys, so rain has pretty much canceled the plan of ripping the dragon because I am not putting myself in danger uh, after what happened with the other car. Heck no. So we're just going to do a little leash of the cruise. Look, everybody's pulled off. This thing just wants to slide.
So I hope that you guys enjoyed that. That was so much work to get this thing ready. It was uh, stressful as putting it lightly. You can probably tell in a lot of those clips, your boy was really not feeling it, but I did what I had to do, got this thing ready, and it did fantastically. This car is so freaking good. It's not, like I can't even, I can't even describe it. But I do want to give you guys a bit of a closer look because I never really did a wrap up of what all went into that process and what's underneath the car now because it is, if I do say so myself, it is a masterpiece under there. So let's take a look. So the very first thing is obviously the rebuilt brake calipers. That was probably one of the biggest job, rebuilt and powder coated. Now one thing I will say is that the powder coaters did not powder coat this section of the caliper where the anti-rattle clip normally would be which I guess that they thought that this needed to be left bare, um, you know, cause sometimes you don't want to powder coat every part of a caliper. I'm going to sand this and just spray it. It shouldn't be a big deal. And obviously the caliper is really, really dirty right now, but it's gloss black. It looks fantastic. Um, so yeah, that's the story on the calipers. And if you see the rust, that's, that's why, but obviously all the brakes are brand new. We have brand new braided and extended Condor speed shop brake lines. And yeah, don't mind the bent sway bar end link. It's kind of my fault because I put it in the wrong position. Well, anyways, sometimes things kind of get messed up in a hurry. So if we crawl up underneath here, you'll pretty much immediately see that this, this is a completely different car from the car in the very first video where I showcased the bottom end of this thing. I mean, all of like the fresh zinc bolts. Hopefully you guys can see some of those up in there the new uh, Condor Speed Shop extended brake lines for the angle kit that's coming, powder coated sway bar with the powder coated um, brackets, obviously the Chase Base Power Steering Kit, which I've shown you guys a couple times. Then we have this early model convertible skid plate to prep this thing for the low life. Powder coated subframe is in, all of the uh, new hardware, like I said. This thing didn't leak a drop of fluid, which was just fantastic. I mean, there's more yellow zinc bolts there, which is kind of my thing. Like I said, this thing kind of came together really, really well. And it's funny because you know, when you're under he underneath here now, it doesn't even look like that much work was done, but I promise you guys, this was a ton of work. So this is what it looks like underneath here now. Obviously I deep cleaned the chassis as well. So everything is clean underneath here, but yeah, this thing did freaking phenomenal. So I'll kind of move back up here. I got everything put back together up here. Like I said, if you saw, I did the entire cooling system. I say entire. I went ahead and got the cooling system taken care of. Basically, I did everything spare of this radiator because that was already in the car, the CSF. And uh, yeah, I had no overheating issues. The car did consume some oil on the trip, actually a decent bit of oil. This S52 is kind of in questionable health, to be honest with you guys. Um, 220,000 miles of probably a very hard life. Um, so kind of all I can do is kind of baby it. I say baby it. Baby it in the way I take care of it. Not gonna baby it in the way I drive it. If something happens, it happens and we'll take care of it. But this engine is gonna give me every ounce of life it has left. And then uh, we got some secret plans for what's coming for this thing after that. But anyways. So as far as what's next on this car, I don't wanna reveal all of my plans yet, but I will say there are really cool wheels coming. No longer the contours, those are actually sold. They're really cool wheels. They are not five by 120. I'll just kind of let you think on that if that kind of helps you give you a hint. Um, they're gonna be, uh, I'll tell you another hint of a part that I've alluded to and kind of already said. Um, it's gonna be like seven or eight degrees of camber in the front, zero in the rear. Big wide crab, crab walk stands in the front, although I will not let it poke past the fenders. The fitment is gonna be on point, just, just trust me. Um, <laughs> that should give you a hint of probably what's coming next. Um, what else? Oh, I know another thing. We come back here. This rear end of this car has always just kind of looked bare to me. Like, I feel like E36 coupes need something in the back, and by something, I mean something shaped kind of like this. If you know, you know. But um, yeah, I mean, there's, act there's actually all sorts of other things I took care of on the car too. Like, I'm sure you saw like, now nah, it's cool. My trunk works, that's cool. 
Um, I did all of these door handle trims and gaskets as well as the strikers themselves are all brand new. As long as, or as well as the uh, hardware. Door sits perfectly nice and flush, so that's cool. I have these brand new that are waiting over there on the shelf to put on. Just need to make time to do it. Let's see, I know there's all sorts of other little things I did. I'm, I'm forgetting because I did so much so quickly that I can hardly even remember. But yeah, this thing, it did phenomenal. You'll see, oh, I forgot. This door is a little tough. You can see we've got dirt in the foot wells. The stripes are gone because I've been using this thing. Um, but this thing is just, it's good. It's good, man. I love this car. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of the update on this thing. Like I said, Expect in the next couple episodes, things to actually start becoming visually interesting for this car. I know it's tough content wise to sell watching you wrench and do maintenance on cars. Um, I know that it can be a little boring. So I hope you guys are excited about the episodes to come. This thing, I promise, I promise progress is being made on it. Even though nothing physically is happening to the car, the things I need parts wise and help and labor, body work, paint, all that kind of stuff is in motion. It's just incredibly expensive and incredibly time consuming to nail all the pieces down for something like this. So you guys are just gonna have to bear with me. Um, I'm doing my best here. Doing both of these at the same time or trying to is really, really taxing me. But if there's anybody crazy enough to do it, it's me. So anyways, I hope you guys are excited for what's to come. I hope you guys liked watching that little montage of clips of me putting this thing together, getting it out on the road, having some fun and enjoying myself. I'm so excited to continue to share this with you guys. This hobby and this, this, this journey I'm on really wouldn't be the same without the community. Like the guys I met at Helen, if you guys are watching this, I love you. Thank you so much for making that show as enjoyable as it could have been. From It's Black to Aiden to Mason Gavin, all those guys. Liam with LEP Automotive. You guys are freaking awesome. And I, I'm so thankful you guys were out there. It made it so enjoyable. All of you guys watching the videos, I know that my channel is so sporadic. One day, I promise it'll be consistent. But with the way my life works right now, I don't really have a consistent source of income, especially while I'm in school. So it's really, really hard to be a consistent automotive YouTuber at a high level. Um, so anyways, I love you guys. Thank you so much. Keep your heads up. Remember, you are so much more than good enough and that you can do anything you put your minds to. I always try to offer a little bit of encouragement at these at the end of these videos, and I think some people think I'm just kind of saying this stuff, but I really want it to drive home to you guys. Like, I struggle sometimes to get my head wrapped around trying to do stuff like this because it can be so overwhelming, but I really, really, really think that anybody can do what I've done with these two cars, and that's why I share this with you guys really and honestly is to encourage you that if I can do it, anybody can do it. All you need to do is one thing at a time. I love Evan Brown, item B. He has a saying, one thing a day. Even if all you do is come out here and throw spacers on your car, that's your one thing and you're good. Like, don't let yourself get so wrapped up in trying to do it all at once. And the money and the time and the effort, just do one thing at a time and dude, and keep it fun. Drive your cars, have a good time, talk to people online about the cars and get to know, get, get in the community um, and find purpose and, and just, you know, enjoy yourself. Keep it fun, keep it fun. That's something I'm trying to get better at and doing this year is keeping it fun. So when I tell you guys that you're more than good enough, it's not just about the cars and what you can do with the cars, it's you personally. Don't let it comparison then comparison to anybody on the internet make you think otherwise. So I don't know why I just went on that rant. Anyways, like I said, I love you guys. I'll see you guys in the next episode and uh, peace out. Last century.